Well, hello. Today I'd like to welcome you to my first impressions of a Keiko Master. Uh, kind of a fun looking pen. It's very, uh, very classy looking. And I went all out. I uh, originally bought just the steel nib version. And then I bought the gold nib. So uh, is there a difference? Well, let's find out. These are the two pens. Sorry, we'll make them match with my photograph. These are the two pens. Uh, let's take a look at them. Now the packaging, if you look at it, on the bottom of this one, the gold lettering, I have all this. And on the back of the one with the silver lettering, I have all of this. So which one is the gold? Which one's the steel? Uh, I did know, but I don't remember anymore, but I'm guessing this one with the gold lettering is the gold one. So we'll just open one up for now. The other one is basically the same packaging. So you open it up at the top, you get a metal thingy. Nothing on the metal. Oh, okay, this is the gold one because it says Master 14 Karat Gold Classic Fountain Pen. And then designed by Lin Fan and Chen Sen. Chen Sen. Barn for Excellence. And we get. Yep, this is the gold one. So the other one. The, oh! There's literature in the other one. Oh, there's literature in both of them. Okay. So you get uh, some stuff. Gives basically the brand information. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, I'll try to remember to put a photograph of it. I honestly don't care about this kind of stuff, so we'll just set it aside. But I'll put a photograph of it in the notes. All right, so, oh good, it'll be easy to tell them apart. One is red, one is black. So, I'm going to just quick set this up for the photograph. So, since they look basically the same, you know, from the side... Uh, the stainless steel one has, in addition, a, a sticker here. So let's just pull out the oops, stainless steel one and take a look at it. Oh, the bottom of the bar. Okay, yeah, the bottom of the steel one doesn't mention the material. And let's pull out the gold one too while we're here. Now what I do with the packages? Don't know. So hopefully I can think up something, because that's quite a lot of packaging. All right, so uh, I like that it's sort of recessed for the clip. It feels like the clip is fairly springy. Um, does it unscrew? Must unscrew. Yep, it unscrews. So the steel one has an extra fine nib in it. A lot of turns there. I almost think you can eyedropper this pen. And then it comes with a converter. <laughs> a lot more turns. All right. A lot of turns to uncap it to the gold one. That two or three turns. And then it just says 14 carat on it, but it doesn't give a nib size. All right, so out of my grab bag of Krishna inks, I pulled a Krishna Specialty Series Brown Pink. And I decided to be smart if I'm going to compare these pens and use the same ink in both of them. And yes, apparently I've been using some other pens today. So we'll make everybody nervous here. It's burbling a little. They're not full, but that's enough for a first impression. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these can be eyedroppered. Haven't tried it, so do so at your own risk. OK. 
Okay, seeing more burbling here, but you know, I'm also looking at it from the side. And I can see the side better because the ink level is lower. There, yeah, we took a pretty good milliliter or two of ink out of there. Which doesn't sound like much, but when you think in terms of the bottle was full, yeah, I'd say I took a good two, at least two milliliters out of there, maybe three. Now nah, let's go with two. Let's not give myself too much credit. Alright, so I've uh, written the names of the two pens. So I, I'm going to review them. You know, the Keiko, the steel one in this column, the gold one in this column. I'll just write and then comment. I may dub comments over top, we'll see. Uh, but right now, what I see is a lot more shading caused by the gold one. And it was a little smoother, a little bit more bounce, not a lot. Uh, the steel one seems to be a bit wetter, but definitely had a lot more feedback to it. And, and so you can see more of the brown taking over in the steel, more of the pink taking over in the gold. Alright, so the same trend basically kept up through the whole writing sample. Uh, you, you can see that the gold one had uh, definitely shows off the shading in this ink. So if, I think if I'm using a shading ink, I want to use the gold one. Um, neither one of them had any problem with the Pierre Gustafson test. I'd say that the uh, steel one is a little bit wetter, which is why it can't show off your shading. I mean. Uh, when you have a pen that's wet, it, it's usually not so good for showing off shading. Um, smoothness, you know, I'll have to give the edge to the gold. I was really impressed writing with reverse in the gold. That was almost smoother than writing uh, the normal way. So, all in all, if, if I had to grab one, I'd probably grab the gold one. But, uh, you know, this extra fine steel one is no slouch either it's actually kind of a fun pen to write with so let's see how they fit in my pocket all right so uh the gold nib one is cleaned out and put away by now uh the steel one is waiting to be cleaned out and i'll tell you the gold one definitely has more flex more bounce to it more line variation but I have to say, I really enjoyed writing with the steel nib one. It, it's wet, it's just got a good line, it shows off the ink well. I enjoy the steel nib one more, even though it doesn't have as much line variation. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> uh, that said, you know, very classy look, uh, very understated. I still left the sticker on it. And as far as the pocket test, because now it's cool enough, which it wasn't when I recorded the writing sample to do a pocket test, because I'm actually wearing a shirt with a pocket. And indeed, passes with flying colors, which I wasn't sure if it would, but it's got that nice little slope down to the clip. And the clip is tight to the body, but it just whoop, lifts right up when you stick the pen in. So overall, I am very pleased with these. I think they will both see use. The steel one may actually see more use than the gold one. I was impressed. This is a jump up in quality for uh, the Chinese market. Now, if I'm going to complain, the plastic doesn't have that high quality feel of like a 
you know, other pens that use plastic that are in this price range. It definitely feels like a cheaper plastic. And, you know, some may object. Actually, there aren't too many injection marks, so I guess if you're going to object to them, you know, actually look at the pen. But on the whole, other than that slightly cheap feel, I think these are good pens. Worth what I paid for them. For the steel one, yes. For the gold one, no. <laughs> but I enjoy them both, and they're both going to be a permanent part of my collection, so I guess that's saying something. So hope that was interesting, hope it was useful, and, uh, you know, have you tried any classy Chinese fountain pens lately? Let us know down in the comments. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.